Hey guys, Vega here. Today's the day we rank every charm in Hollow Knight and Pale Court. As you may know, I've spent ages looking at charms for the Deep Dive series, so I thought I'm in a pretty good position to do a tier list on them. Oh, and I'll also be showcasing one of my favourite charm setups, Abyssal Bloom, Joni's Blessing and Sharp Shadow, and trying to get through as many god home bosses as possible before the video ends. I'll be ranking charms from S tier all the way down to F tier. S tier charms being godlike and borderline OP charms, F tier being charms barely worth putting on. Now with that out of the way, let's jump into it. First up we have Wayward Compass. This is most people's first charm, it's cheap, only costing one notch, shows you where you are on the map and that's about it. Now in most games you can just see where you are on the map by default, and to be honest it's kinda weird the game makes you waste a charm slot to get this, but hey that's the reality we live in. Now I know there's a subset of you dgens that want me to put this in S tier and will point out that it shows up in some speedrun builds, but I'm here to tell you you're crazy if you think this is in S tier. Sure I may still use it after 200 hours of game time, but since I spent most of it hitting this damn target dummy for the deep dive videos, I struggle and still get lost, so it does save me a lot of time. All things considered, I'm going to throw it smack bang in the middle of the B tier, but I sincerely hope we don't have something like this in Silksong. Continuing on with the theme of putting standard game features as charm effects, we get to Gathering Swarm. Holy hell is this a boring charm. You're telling me unless I waste one notch slot on Gathering Swarm, you're going to make me pick up pennies off the ground? Seriously? And even worse, it doesn't even have any special interactions. Like imagine how much cooler it could have been if we could weaponize it with Glowing Womb or even Hive Blood. At best it's a slight time saver and removes a tedious bit of the game, but it just doesn't do enough to be worth using outside of geo farming, and for that it's going in the D tier. The good news is we've finally gotten to a charm that affects combat. The bad news is it's Stalwart Shell. This is one of the most useless combat charms in the game, and honestly the fact it costs 2 notches instead of 1 is criminal. Sure you can use it to make a few face tanking builds for select bosses, and it is cool that you can sneak a quick focus heal in during the iframes, but outside of that it's just pretty awful. Yeah this can help you avoid taking back to back hits, but honestly at that point why not just save 2 notches and use almost anything else instead. This is going straight to F tier, maybe if it didn't cost 2 notches it could be C tier, but its effect just isn't that useful. Next up we have Soul Catcher for 2 notches. This charm's main selling point is that it's the only decent charm most players can find for a good chunk of the early game. It gives you a little bit of extra soul each time you hit something, which is almost always going to be somewhat useful. You're probably thinking I'm going to rate this fairly highly right? Wrong. I'm not a big fan of this charm, and that's because it's just so hard to feel the effects of. Sure the extra soul is nice, but it doesn't really change any breakpoints that would make you really notice that it's working at all. You still need 3 hits to be able to cast or heal, and it only saves you a single hit to fill your soul from empty. Yeah sure the extra soul does add up over longer periods, but I prefer being able to feel the effects of my charms moment to moment, and that's why I'm going to put it in the upper end of C tier. Shaman Stone, or as I pronounce it for some unknown reason, Shaman Stone. This thing is a monster, 3 notches and it gives you a huge damage boost to spells with no drawbacks. And not only that, but it's also given to you way earlier than you'd expect, around the mid game for only 220 geo, now that's a bargain. This is a core part of spellcasting setups, but honestly it's so strong you can basically throw it in on any build you like and it's gonna get work done. There's nothing bad I can say about this charm, it's an easy S tier. That brings us to Soul Eater. Remember the problems I had with Soul Catcher being too subtle to really appreciate? Well Soul Eater improves on this. You'll be getting a big chunk of extra soul each time you hit something, enough to cast a spell or heal every 2 hits which feels great. Not only that, it's more notch efficient than Soul Catcher as well, so this is an A or S tier right, surely? Well not exactly. While the soul generation and efficiency is really good, the fact it costs 4 notches to get the job done puts a bit of a dampener on things. I will give it some bonus points for being the best charm to over charm with, especially for raiding and bosses, but outside of that it actually loses to the combination of soul catcher and spell twister combined, which collectively costs the same amount of notches anyway, and because of that I just can't justify putting it any higher than C tier. I can definitely see an argument for B tier and I'm sure I'll hear about it in the comments, but for me at least I just don't often find myself wanting to spend the notches when other alternatives exist. Dashmaster aka Sands from Undertale as my comment sections like to point out. This charm is going to let you dash 33% more often as well as dash downwards. This on its own is pretty useless in combat, although it does make getting around feel a bit nicer. You'll also be able to dash in the downwards direction which is a neat little gimmick but rarely useful. Everything I've said so far really doesn't justify the 2 notches it's asking for, but it does boost sharp shadow damage by an extra 50% of your nail damage. 
For me, damage is one of the most valuable stats in the game, and even though it's in a slightly weirder form, this is still damage, and that's why I'm placing what would normally be a D tier charm solidly in the C tier. If it lowered Shadow Dash cooldown as well as the standard dash, we might even consider a low B tier. And of course, the companion to Dash Master, we have Sprint Master. One notch goes in, 20% move speed comes out. Pretty simple. I wish move speed was more useful in this game, but to be frank, it just isn't. Sure, you can get from A to B a tiny bit faster, but considering we can all spam dash like it's going out of style, and the fact it doesn't work while swimming or in mid-air, you might be surprised how little time is actually spent just running on solid ground. If that wasn't lackluster enough, this charm can actually be detrimental, as it'll mess up your muscle memory and oftentimes you'll find yourself walking right into the enemy taking extra damage. In theory, it can help you stick to some bosses a little better and improve your overall DPS uptime, but it's a little hard to quantify how much it's actually helping. Part of me wants to rate this higher as it's a nice looking charm. Unfortunately though, we aren't rating based on appearances, so it's still gonna land right in the D tier. Grub Song. Everyone's favorite base game one notch charm, myself included. What can I say? I love this charm. It fits into almost any build and is always useful, at least outside of radiant bosses. If you're a god gamer and never get hit, yeah sure, maybe skip over this one. However, if you're a mere mortal like myself and get hit every now and then, the soul generation this provides is gonna be pretty damn good. You get just under half a heal each time you take damage, which is pretty awesome. And that's just for combat. This thing gets even better once you realize how good its special interactions are. Combining this with Weaver Song lets the Weaverlings convert 100% of the damage they deal into soul, which for three notches total is one of my favorite ways to generate soul, because I'm lazy and I like charms that require zero input from me. It's also a core part of the unlimited healing build for platforming segments, which is a godsend for things like Path of Pain. And to top it all off, you can access it at a fairly reasonable point through the game, depending on how good you are at finding the grubs. Again, I can't fault this charm, especially for its cost. However, I also wouldn't call it overpowered, which is kind of what's required for it to be in the S tier. So instead, I'm gonna place it just below in the A tier. A really awesome charm. Up next, we have Grubberfly's Allergy. I was really excited to try this charm when I heard what it did. See, I used to enjoy playing a character called Kale from League of Legends, who, at level 6 or higher, goes from being a melee character with two swords to a ranged character, also with two swords, except now they shoot light. And this charm was basically that, but in Hollow Knight. This has got to be one of the coolest effects you can get from a charm in the game, but by the time you finally get a hold of it, you've already explored the whole map and probably only really have bosses to deal with. And to be honest, this thing isn't really that good at fighting bosses. Taking any damage will brick this charm until you heal to full, and having three notches rendered completely useless certainly isn't the vibe I'm after. If we got this a bit earlier and were able to use it to explore and progress, it would be way more useful. But as it stands, outside of a few niche uses such as the delicate flower quest, I honestly only ever use this with its interaction with Grub Song, which lets you gain 25 soul when getting hit instead of 15, and enables my all-time favorite infinite healing platform build. And for such a cool charm, it's really sad that it isn't more useful. Yeah, you can use Lifeblood to cushion your health and not have to worry about losing the projectiles from one hit, but the fact remains, there isn't really any situations where it shines. I'm still going to put this in C tier and not D tier, but that's purely due to its special interactions. The most useful part of a charm probably shouldn't be the numbers buff to a different charm. This is definitely a missed opportunity, sadly. Unbreakable Heart is up next, and we go from something as flashy as shooting light out of your nail to just some extra health. This is just really an inoffensive charm. You pay two notches, you get two masks. It's a decent deal, and it sits about in the middle of the pack in how much health you're getting per notch spent versus other charms. It does, however, have a few extra things going for it. These masks are real masks. They can be healed back if lost, and they can be multiplied by things like Journey's Blessing. Every other health boosting charm comes in the form of lifeblood, which, as most of you know, can't be regained if lost unless you sit at a bench. Overall though, nothing too special, but it's still pretty useful and can even grant you extra damage with Abyssal Bloom. And you know how much we like damage, right? A solid B tier. Unbreakable Greed's up next, and this is our one and only geo farming charm in the game. This charm has one use and one use only, and that's to let you farm geo easier. Two notches is pretty reasonable, and most people are going to use this at least one time in their playthrough, once they realise how expensive it is to make fragile charms unbreakable, but other than that, there isn't much to say about it. It's useless in combat, and it's pretty unnecessary for 99.9% .9 of the game, and once you've bought everything you need to, it becomes literally the most useless charm in the game, which is impressive in its own way, considering Heavy Blow exists. 
It's still good at what it's designed for though, and for that, I think C tier is a fair spot to put it. Up next we have Unbreakable Strength. This charm is absolutely bonkers. It has zero downsides and gives you 50% extra nail damage at all times. No strings attached. Once you unlock this, you'll rarely ever be taking it off. It almost feels unfair at times with how much damage this gives you. It's a three notch charm, but honestly, I think even if it were four, we'd still be using it. It does only apply to the nail itself and not nail arts or anything that scales with the nail, so do keep that in mind, but considering how powerful it already is, I think that's fair. Great value, a great effect, probably the best charm in the game. It joins Shaman Stone at the tippity top of the S tier. Getting back to the spellcaster side of things, we come to Spell Twister. This is another brilliant charm and reduces the cost of spells. It allows you to fire four spells with a full tank of soul, and it actually outperforms Soul Catcher for the same cost of two notches, when it comes to casting anyway. Obviously, it's not quite as good if you're spending soul to heal, but I mean, it still sorta helps, right? As you'll be spending less on spells, and therefore maybe have a little extra soul to use for heals. When it comes to cast to build, this paired with Shaman Stone is non-negotiable, and you won't see me without it. If you also combine it with Soul Catcher, you'll find it actually outperforms Soul Eater for the same cost, which is part of the reason I value Soul Eater a bit less than I normally would. Not quite broken enough to make it to the S tier, in my opinion, but really high in the A tier nonetheless. And that brings us to Steady Body. Asking the community if this charm is good or bad is kinda like asking a group of people if pineapple's good on pizza. Everyone seems to have a strong opinion either one way or the other, and there's no in between. Let me know in the comments, by the way, your take on the pineapple pizza debate, and in return, I'm going to tell you what the deal is with Steady Body. Steady Body is absolutely useless. All it does is stop you getting pushed back. You can literally just hold the walk button and get the same results. That's what I used to think. Then, I did some research and testing for the deep dive video, and let me say, my eyes were open to Team Steady Body. I'm not going to get into the details here. If you want to know the truth, go check out the deep dive video I've done already. But the conclusion was, yes, this charm doesn't work with every single boss, but on the many it does work against, it puts in huge work. This charm essentially unlocks the potential for Quick Slash and Mark of Purity by letting you stay in range and pump out crazy damage. For one notch, this can skyrocket your DPS way more than a one notch charm has any right to do so. Now the catch is, you do still need to play fairly well to make use of this. It's definitely high skill skewed. However, even for an ordinary player, it can significantly improve your damage. Just to clarify, when you have a really high attack speed, it's impossible to not hit yourself out of range. Since this removes recoil, it'll allow you to stay in range and remove that downside. I did consider S tier for this, and there is surely an argument for it. However, since it's more of a support charm and not the star of the show itself, I'm going to put it at the very top of the A tier. Let me know if you think I'm wrong. And then we get to Heavy Blow. A fitting name because this charm does blow. Seriously, this charm just sucks. You know all the reasons we just listed about why Steady Body was good? This charm does the opposite, and costs twice as much. In what world would I want to push enemies away from me when the regular knockback works just fine? I do have to mention it is sorta usable with Grubberfly's allergy build as the projectiles can push them back a bit more, but we've already covered how Grubberfly's allergy is also pretty lackluster. This essentially lowers your DPS uptime on most bosses as they'll be pushed out of your nail range and you'll spend most of your time chasing them around the map trying to damage them. Sure, it does let you knock down bosses slightly more often, but this is Hollow Knight, not Monster Hunter. Getting a knockdown isn't really a huge focus of the game. It just sort of happens when it happens. Honestly, even if this charm costs one notch, I'd still say it's bad. Hell, if it costs literally zero notches, I still wouldn't be using it. It's more of a hindrance than help. I really wish this charm got reworked. It has a really cool name and there's so many cooler things it could have done. It could have increased damage at the expense of slowing down the attack speed. It could keep its knockback, but maybe deal some bonus damage if the enemy hits a wall or couldn't be knocked back. And honestly, anything would be an improvement over what we got. And for that reason, it's going at the very bottom of F tier. It's terrible, and you can't convince me otherwise. Next up, we have Quick Slash. And yeah, it kind of looks similar in appearance to Heavy Blow. But let me tell you, it couldn't be any further away in terms of how good it is. This charm will increase your attack speed by around 46% and will set you back three notches. Needless to say, this is going to be a huge increase in your damage output. And you know we love damage. I'd say in a one-to-one -one comparison, it's slightly worse than strength in terms of how much it increases your DPS. And yeah, it's still really strong by itself, but it is hard to make full use of without Steady Body. But being slightly worse than the best charm in the game still puts it in a really good position. And that's why it's a no-brainer to throw it in the S tier, right behind strength. As the night proves, size isn't always everything. But we could all use a little bit of extra length sometimes, right? And Longnail gives us just that. 
for two notches you'll get an extra 15% nail range. This doesn't sound like a lot, but it's enough to make combat feel just that bit smoother, and makes keeping out of harm's way quite a bit easier as well. Two notches means it's incredibly flexible as well, and we can use it in pretty much any build that has two spare slots. Overall I really like this charm as it's always reliable and never lets me down. And for that reason, I'm going to put it in the A tier. Mark of Pride. This is long nail, but bigger, better and more efficient. We're getting 25% extra nail range. That's 10% more than long nail for only one extra notch, which is really good value. This can be a bit of a double edged sword as its 3 notch cost isn't exactly what I'd call flexible, but at least it compensates you well for your troubles. When I'm using this charm I can just about turn my brain off since I can stand that far away, and it can make sneaking extra hits off so much easier on bosses that like to move around a lot. Overall this is a lot better than long nail on paper, as long as you can fit it in. However, for me the loss in flexibility does act as a bit of a counterweight for the extra efficiency, and in the end I value it about the same as long nail, which is still really good and a solid A tier. Remember how strength charm gave us 50% extra damage for 3 notches? Well, what if I told you there was a charm that gave you 75% extra damage for only 2, and it worked with nail arts? Well, that's what Fury the Fallen does. So that's an instant S and the best charm in the game by far, right? Well, not exactly. As I'm sure you know, this incredible value comes with an equally incredible cost. And that cost is you only get to have it if you've got one mask remaining. I'd say this is the most skill dependent charm in the game bar none. At the highest skill level this does take the cake for the best charm in the game, but for the average player this is fairly mediocre. I don't know about you guys, but just knowing I'm at one mask is going to make me play worse and before I know it I'll be waking up at a bench before I even get to make use of the extra damage. I gotta say though, visually this is one of the nicer looking charms in the game, and it's kinda neat that it's the first charm you can find. But still, I don't really find myself making much use of it sadly, for me it's just average in the C tier. Thorns of Agony is up next, and I gotta say I used to use this prickly little charm non-stop on my first playthrough. It only costs a single notch, and deals a nail's worth of damage if you get hit. Funny enough, I feel like this charm has little quirks about it that makes it both better than you'd think, but at the same time worse than you'd think. And that might sound weird, but let me explain. Thorns can double hit if enemies are super close to you when it triggers, essentially doubling its damage, and this happens more than you'd expect. On the flip side though, I don't think a lot of people realise its drawbacks. Since you can't move while the thorns are shooting out, it's basically doing a mini stun every time you get hit, which eats into the time you could be hitting back or moving to safety. Especially for ranged enemies, this makes it even harder to get to them. I gotta admit, part of me has a soft spot for this charm because it does feel nice when it works to trade some damage back, but at the end of the day, the better as a player you get, the worse this is, so I can't place it any higher than a D tier. Elder Shell's up next. Two notches and you get a shell around you that blocks damage while you focus. This charm has so much potential to be cool, but it just seems like they over nerfed it before it ever got a chance. For starters, getting hit when focusing might block damage, even multiple masks worth the damage, but your focus will still be interrupted anyway, and to make matters worse, after taking damage 4 times the shell breaks and can't be used until you sit at a bench. That's pretty crazy to me, this would have been so much cooler if it just had a 10 or 15 second cooldown, but could be used infinitely. Maybe if it stopped you being interrupted and let you finish your heal off, I'd understand it only having 4 uses, but as it stands, this is just a pathetic attempt at a safety net for focusing at bad times. Belda, stick to making gates instead of shells. D tier. Moving on to Fluke Nest. I've always said the one problem with Hollow Knight is there aren't any shotguns. Or at least that's what I would have said if this charm didn't exist. For 3 notches, your Shade Soul and Vengeful Spirit spell will turn into a shotgun that hits for way more damage if you can land it. It can be a bit tricky to do so, but this thing in a spell setup shreds bosses. And even better, it can actually hit for more than it should due to a bug that lets the flukes deal damage multiple times. Team Cherry's nerfed this charm more than any other, but despite that it's still really good. I was going to put this in the B tier, but then I rewatched Blue SR's video and thought I'd better at least put it in the A tier. On to Defender's Crest. The room you find this is literally covered in dung, which is fitting because this charm is a piece of crap as well. For a single notch you'll generate a damaging dung cloud around you. That sounds alright, but the problem is the numbers. It just deals such an insignificant amount of damage at all stages of the game. Not to mention it's so small you'll barely be hitting anything with it anyway. Credit where credit's due though, it is useful for fighting lost kin and its variant, as it does kill the 1 health blobs which can be a pain in the ass. But outside of that, the best thing it does is save you some geo at leg eater. 
Oh, and I haven't even mentioned the interactions with other charms that make them weaker as well. This is in the running for the worst charm in the game, but at the very least, it does only cost one notch, so I'm gonna let Heavy Blow keep its spot as the worst, but only just. This is clearly an F tier charm, don't use it. I know some people think this is helping them, but trust me, I've ran the numbers, it's definitely a placebo. Glowing Womb. This is a charm you'll often see in summoning builds. It's fun to mess around with, but it's never really the best option for anything in particular. It only costs 2 charms which isn't bad and summons a hatchling that blows up for 9 damage. You can have 4 out at once which gives some decent burst damage, but the problem is you can't control when they take the 8 soul required to spawn, which can get really annoying if you need to heal. On top of this, it can make getting soul off normal enemies a bit harder as well, as the hatchlings will kill things you might want to farm soul off in the first place. This isn't a horrible charm by any means, but it does lack any utility or specific scenarios where it really excels in. And then I remembered its huge damage boost when combined with King's Honor, and I was a bit conflicted about how this should affect its standing. This combination makes the hatchlings deal so much damage that I had to upgrade my initial C ranking to a solid B tier. This might be a bit controversial since it's getting such a big boost only because of a certain setup with a Pale Court charm, but I mean, if you don't like it, just refer to my initial C ranking. What's next? Ah, Quick Focus. This charm is incredible. It'll speed up healing by 33% for a fairly reasonable 3 notches. It's more suited to bosses over exploration and makes healing mid-combat so, so much easier. This is one of those charms that once you put it on it's kinda hard to take off. The faster healing just feels so good and it lets you get 2 or more heals off instead of 1 pretty comfortably in a lot of situations, or lets you heal at times it normally wouldn't even be an option. Overall a really good charm that stays relevant for the whole game, and I'm putting it in the high A tier. And on the other side of the coin we have Deep Focus. This makes healing take 65% longer, but in exchange you'll heal for double. It does cost more notches than Quick Focus at 4, which is fairly hefty, but the kind of builds you run this in it doesn't tend to matter too much anyway. While Quick Focus was awesome during combat, Deep Focus is more suited to platforming and exploring. Trying to use this in combat is an absolute nightmare and makes it really hard to find opportunities to heal. It is technically faster to heal 2 masks with this than 2 masks normally, but I still don't really like how limiting it feels. It is a key charm in the unlimited healing platform build, so bonus points there, and while there are charms that fill a similar niche, I think it does its job better than its competition. For me though, I value charms a little bit higher if they excel at fighting bosses over other activities, and that's why I'm rating it slightly lower than Quick Focus, and putting it still at a solid B tier. And that brings us to Lifeblood Heart. For 2 notches you'll get 2 masks of lifeblood. The sad truth however is, this charm is basically unbreakable heart, but worse in nearly every way. You get 2 lifeblood instead of 2 real masks, meaning you can't heal them back, and it's the same cost which feels like a bit of a ripoff. It can be alright if you want to use it with Grubberfly's allergy and have a bit of a lifeblood buffer before you lose the projectile bonus, but honestly that's the only thing going for it, and that's why we're sliding it into D tier. Continuing on with the lifeblood charms, we have lifeblood core. This is very similar to Lifeblood Heart in function, however for only one extra notch you get twice as many Lifeblood Hearts. See now, at least this charm has something going for it. Sure it's still Lifeblood and not real masks, but it's got the best health to notch cost ratio in the entire game for any charm. Sure it's a bit less flexible, but at least there's a reason to use it, and for that I'm putting it in the B tier. And last but not least of the Lifeblood charms we come to Journey's Blessing. For 4 notches it'll give you a bonus 40% masks, but convert them all to lifeblood. When I first read this I thought it sounded amazing, until I realised that's only 4 masks, which I could get 1 notch cheaper with lifeblood core. To actually make this charm worth using, you kinda have to use it with unbreakable heart, which gets boosted by the additional 40%, which I think is kinda lame that it's mandatory. Not to mention eating up 6 notches. But if you're happy to do so, then it is nice for bosses where you don't want to have to worry about trying to heal, because you'll just have so much health you can tank most things. And if this was just base game, I'd probably leave it at that and put it in low C tier or maybe high D, but lucky for it, this list is being done in a world where Pale Court exists. And one of those Pale Court charms, Abyssal Bloom, breathes new life into Journey's Blessing, and actually makes it part of my favourite build. Long story short, Journey's Blessing gives you loads of health, just like normal, but it also triggers a heap of extra buffs from Abyssal Bloom that you'd normally only get while at one mask. This interaction is so good that it moves Journey's Blessing all the way up to B tier. Okay, this might be a controversial one, but I think Hiveblood is garbage. 
before I explain why, I better tell you what it does. For a hefty 4 notches, you'll regenerate the last single mask lost over 10 seconds. As long as you don't get hit again or manually heal. Sounds good on paper, right? But here's the thing. If you need the healing it can give mid-combat, then I'm telling you, you probably aren't going to be avoiding damage consistently enough to have that many masks regenerate anyway. And on the flip side, if you're able to avoid damage that much, then why'd you just waste 4 notches on this thing in the first place? Either way, it's 4 notches on little to no benefit. And yep, I can hear you all screaming at your monitor now, Vega, you're supposed to be using it for platforming. Well, do I have some bad news for you? You've been wasting your time. The Deep Focus, Grub Song and Grubberfly's Allergy Infinite Healing combo does the same thing except for you don't have to stand there like a dingus for 10 seconds waiting for your mask to regenerate. And yeah sure, you can start your next attempt in this time and perhaps mitigate that wait time, but what if you fail before the 10 seconds is up? Now you're just down a mask. I'd much rather be in control of my healing and have the freedom to jump right into another attempt without worrying. As much as I want to put it into the B tier for the funny B puns, I can't justify anything more than a D tier. Spore Shroom up next. This is sort of like Defender's Crest, but instead of being constantly on, only triggers after focusing. And it has quite a lot more damage in range than Defender's Crest as well. Overall, I do prefer this over Defender's Crest, even though you have to go out of your way to land the damage, it at least deals enough to actually be noticeable. And you can team it up with Shape of Un, Vessel's Lament, Deep Focus and King's Honor to make quite a decent build based around focusing. Despite that, it's still pretty lackluster and outside of just messing around for fun, it's not likely you'll get much out of it. And that's why we're putting it in D tier. That brings us to Sharp Shadow. This lets you deal 1 nail strike's worth of damage when shade cloaking through enemies, and also extends its range by 40%, all this for only 2 notches. I really enjoy using this charm, the extra range on shade cloak can help out with avoiding damage on some of the thicker or more mobile bosses and can make it a lot easier to land extra damage at times that would normally be tricky. You can buff up its damage with Abyssal Bloom and Dash Master and get it hitting really hard, which is a fun build to mess around with. Yeah, it's not great if you're doing platforming segments, but pretty much everywhere else it's going to be a solid choice. It's not such a game changer that I can justify putting it in S tier, sorry Royd, but I will put it in the A tier because it just feels so good to use. Shape Voon is up next, for two notches you'll morph into a slug while healing. To me this is a bit of a poor man's quick focus, which might sound weird at first, but both charms essentially let you sneak in heals in situations you normally couldn't. Now yeah, this is one notch cheaper than quick focus, and it's really good on paper, but it's also harder to use effectively and has a bit of a learning curve to it. For me it's mainly the slight delay before you start moving that can be a bit of a pain to get used to and result in taking some extra damage here and there. It does do some cool things that are unique though, particularly any builds that focus on focusing. Using things like Vessel's Lament and Spore Shroom can be made a lot more viable and lets you use those charms without being a sitting duck. I've also got to give it a shout out when used against the Mantis Lords. The smaller hitbox when you're in slug form means you can literally dodge the spear attack completely while healing. In the end, this is one of the more underappreciated charms, and I think that's mainly because it's a bit funky to use. But considering it's only two notches, I think we can just barely squeeze it into the B tier. Nail Master's Glory. This is going to let you charge up nail arts way faster. Let's be honest, how often did you use your nail arts in your first playthrough? Maybe towards the very end of the game, sure, but generally, most people barely touch them. And the reason is they just feel so damn bad to charge. Well, for only one notch, you can fix this problem. The thing is though, as crazy as the damage is with nail arts, even with this faster charge speed, you might not be doing as much damage as you think compared to just swinging. And that's because the most OP charm in the game, Unbreakable Strength, doesn't apply its damage to nail arts, and this really closes the gap in damage. Unfortunately, this really hurts the need for this charm to exist, as even without it, you're better just charging a nail art up during downtime, which you could most likely do even if you didn't have Nail Master's Glory equipped. And that's why I'm relegating it into C tier. It's not terrible by any means, but it's just not that great either. Weaver Song. What can I say? I absolutely love this charm. For two notches, you get three cool little weevling summons that jump around and deal a bit of damage. Now, yeah sure, the damage isn't anything crazy, but these things don't cost any soul and can't be hurt or die. And on top of that, they can actually generate a decent amount of soul passively if you pair it up with Grub Song. And for me at least, having a way to generate soul with zero weapon on my part makes it invaluable. Funny enough, I recall my first time beating Nightmare King Grim, I used this charm which honestly probably wasn't optimal, but nevertheless it helped me deal a bit of extra damage in a fight I was really struggling to master the damage windows of. Maybe I'm biased, but I'm going to put this right in the B tier, mostly for its utility. 
Dream Wielder. This is basically Nail Master's Glory, but for the Dream Nail, and also costs one notch. If you thought charging nail arts mid combat was awkward, then try using the Dream Nail mid combat. Unless you're damn near psychic, it's almost impossible to land. Dream Wielder speeds up the long wind up time to the point you can actually viably use it now against bosses. Not only that, but it doubles the amount of soul gained to 66, which is huge. Now you're probably thinking, since I placed Nail Master's Glory in the C tier, this charm will probably be similar, right? Well, not exactly. While the fact that Unbreakable Strength kind of nullified the value of fast charging nail arts, at least in my opinion, there isn't a similar charm that devalues Dream Wielder. And while it's not exactly a charm I personally choose often, there's no denying the utility this brings for only one notch. And for that, I'm going to place it in the B tier. Onto Hollow Knight's second dream charm, Dream Shield. I'm going to be honest, this charm is a bit of a guilty pleasure of mine, and I probably use it more than I should, mainly because I just hate dodging projectiles, especially if there's more than a few on screen. This is fairly hefty at 3 notches and gives you a rotating shield. What I like about this is you can sort of play defensively when it's pointed away from the enemy and then charge them in time for it to be facing towards them. And this pattern is really fun to mess around with. It also does 1 nails worth of damage if it hits an enemy. So it has both defense and attack all in one charm. As much as I personally love this gameplay, I can't deny it's fairly lackluster for 3 notches so as much as it hurts me to do so, I can't give it much more than a mid C tier. For two notches, Grimchild will make you stay in Hollow Nest just a little less lonely. You'll get a flying range summon to hang out with. I think this is a really cool charm. Having a little companion that can't die and doesn't drain your soul ticks all the same boxes as Weaver Song, except this guy's ranged as well. The damage this thing does is actually pretty decent, at least for a summon, and the fact it's ranged and actually has a decent aim as well means flying enemies are no longer a problem. Despite all that, it's still of limited usefulness and part of the reason Weaver Song was so good was because it had utility. Grimchild on the other hand trades all this utility for a bit of extra damage, which isn't really a lot in the grand scheme of things. I think it's well suited to the C tier. Onto Grimchild's rival, Carefree Malady. This will set you back 3 notches and in exchange, you'll have a chance to negate damage. Now, this charm can get pretty complex and I'd suggest watching the deep dive episode if you want the nitty gritty, but for now, I'm going to keep it simple. This charm's got to perform worse than almost all other durability charms in most situations, and even worse, you're somewhat at the mercy of RNG. Unlike normal health charms, you can never be 100% sure how many times it's going to trigger and save your butt. Sure, there is a chance you get lucky and it winds up being better than Unbreakable Health, but on the flip side you also get times where you get unlucky as well. It does have a cool niche where you can manipulate the RNG and survive a hit versus a Radiant boss, and to be fair that's a pretty cool and unique claim. But other than that, it's just a health charm with extra steps. I hate to say it because it's a cool concept, but it's a D tier charm. And speaking of cool sounding charms that are lacklustre, let me tell you about King Soul. Getting 4 soul every 2 seconds is neat and all, but not for 5 notches. I get it, it's more of a story charm, but when you can use Weaver Song and Grub Song combo to get a similar amount of soul or more for two notches cheaper, you know something ain't right. It's such a cool sounding charm, but sadly it's going right down to the depths of F tier. Up next is Void Heart. I'm not sure if I should even be ranking this, but I mean, technically it is a charm I guess, and it stops your shade from attacking as well as setting its health to one. And on top of that, it makes the Void take a chill pill. Zero cost for a positive effect, even though it's not a game changer, to me, instantly puts it in the A tier. And now we're on to the Pale Court Charms, the first of which is King's Honor. Just imagine Defender's Crest took steroids, ascended with Gorb, and just straight up didn't suck. That's what King's Honor is. Every part that sucked about Defender's Crest has been fixed and then some. The damage numbers on this thing are insane, and the size of the clouds are way bigger and it even creates clouds on enemies that can spread. This is without a doubt the best one notch charm in the game in my opinion. In fact this charm's so good it even elevates other charms from mediocrity to excellence, making things like glowing womb hatchlings hit incredibly hard. If I had to make one complaint about it, it's the white coloured clouds can get a bit much sometimes and make certain things harder to see. But it's a small price to pay for the benefits you get. Placing this charm is a no-brainer, straight into the S tier. Next up we have Mark of Purity. Ever wanted to turn your nail into a Gatling gun? Well, now you can. For three notches, you'll be able to hold the attack button down and gain attack speed each time you land a hit. At best, this ends up nearly twice as good as Quick Slash. Sounds OP, right? Well, there are a few drawbacks. Getting hit resets the speed, and you'll deal 20% less nail damage. Think of this as a high risk, high reward version of Quick Slash that rewards you for consecutive hits and not getting hit but on the flip side, punishes you with a slower starting attack speed and less damage per hit if you play bad. Obviously, if you're a god gamer, this is in the S tier, but taking into consideration all skill levels, we'll be putting it in the A tier. Vessel's Lament is up next, 
and this is one of those charms that makes you play in a really unique way. You'll create a blast around you and any enemies you've hit when focusing. The blast deals decent damage and you can get some really fun and unique focus builds using this. It only costs 2 notches, which is fairly reasonable, but it does take a bit of effort to fully utilise and is probably one of the least powerful Pale Core charms. Charms like Spore Shroom, that need you to focus to deal damage, have always been pretty niche. And while this makes the strategy a whole lot better, it's still not the most powerful setup to run. And for that, this one's going in the C tier. Boot of Hell and S will change all of your spells to the pure versions. In exchange for making these spells a little more awkward to use, they'll get a huge damage boost, a little bit like Fluke Nest. If you can handle each spell's quirks, then this takes spell builds to a whole nother level in terms of damage output, and adding in Shaman Stone along with this will make each spell hit like a truck. Just like the other Pale Court charms, it's a bit more high risk high reward than the base game charms. And at 4 notches on top of the awkward spells, it can be a bit of a hard sell. If Fluke Nest didn't have the ability to hit more times than intended with each fluke, I think this would be the clear winner. However, that's not the reality we live in. That combined with the extra notch it costs means I'm gonna have to rate it a little lower in the B tier, but it's still a really solid choice if you can fit it in. And last but not least, we have Abyssal Bloom. This charm does it all. Huge nail range, loads of extra damage, move speed, and even dash cooldown. And it kinda needs to have so many stats considering it costs 5 notches. As you lose masks, you'll gradually gain more and more of these bonuses. The lower your health, the stronger you'll be. It's still very backloaded, however at least you'll be getting some benefits along the way, unlike Fury of the Fallen's all or nothing approach. Like any charm that promotes being at one mask, this is obviously skewed towards higher skill players, but luckily there is a bit of a workaround to this. Equipping Journey's Blessing treats you as if you're at one mask for everything except for a portion of the damage buff. This particular setup is absolutely bonkers for one-on-one -on -one boss fights, and makes this completely viable for even average players like myself. Sure, you probably won't be using it for endurance fights like Pantheons, but for everything else this is going to be amazing. Once you're at one mask, you have the equivalent of 3 marks of prides, 1 fury of the fallen, a sprint master, and even a dash master, all for only 5 notches. Looking at it this way, it's fairly easy to see why this is situationally the most powerful charm in the game and deserving of S tier. And that's the tier list done. If you want to mess around and do your own list, I'll leave a link pinned in the comments below. And of course, let me know if you disagree with any of my rankings below. Oh, and another thing. From the time this video is posted, you'll have one week to vote on a community tier list using the same tier list as this video. This will only be available for one week from the date the video is posted, and I'll leave a link pinned in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.